Hi everyone, my name is Julia Mann and I'm the owner and founder of Lash Tribe. We help create successful and fully booked lash artists and lash trainers all over the world with the help of our online and in-person training programs that get you results fast and efficiently. In today's episode, I would love to tell you a little bit more about how to become a good lash trainer. And of course, I want to share with you my story of how I started out, the humble beginnings, and how I got to be one of the highest charging lash trainers in Australia. So if you would like to know more about how to become a good lash trainer, how to even get started and get students into the door, and also get the knowledge that will continuously update your training, then stay tuned. All right, so let's start in the beginning because this is where we always start. When I first did eyelash extensions, that was in 2010, I never thought, not in a million years, that I would train other people um, from all over the world. Now, now that we are in COVID times, unfortunately, of course, there's no more traveling, but you can imagine if you've never heard about lash travel myself before basically what it is doing lashes in 2010 starting to train some others because of a facebook group that i opened up this is like the the fast spiel and i will dive deeper into it in a minute but then going from online courses in-person training to actually traveling the world flying all over the place to speak at lash conferences and teach people in different countries to where we are now there's a lot of years of experience and a lot of years involved. This doesn't always have to take 10 years. I never wanted to be a trainer 10 years ago when I first started in lashing. My training career only started in 2016 and I kind of slid into it. I was never really planning on training others in lashes, but the story will obviously tell you exactly how everything happened. But if you are listening to this episode now expecting results, that you do a quick trainer course with us because obviously we do a training course three times a year, the Nala trainer training course, and you think you do the course and you go off and you teach people straight away. This is not really how it works. There has to be a lot of experience. There has to be a lot of self, I guess, development, motivational things, a lot of mindset. And of course, all of the different types of knowledge areas that are required to do eyelash extensions. If you are really, really great at doing eyelash extensions, you may have won several awards. Doesn't necessarily make you a good trainer. Becoming a trainer is so much more. There is a lot involved, which I'm wanting to talk to you about now. So 2010, myself in my home salon, I started doing eyelash extensions. Been doing it for quite a while. Started to get a little bit, I guess, frustrated that there wasn't enough knowledge out there i had to pay a lot of money for training i was going to my own lash artist who didn't want to really share any of the information with me i um, one day and that was in 2015 after doing lashes for five years successfully ish <laughs> kind of successful that means but also not really updating my own knowledge because that just wasn't enough information out there unless you pay thousands of dollars right so uh, in 2015, I asked my lash artist back then, the cleanser that you are using, it's amazing. I would love to know where you get the cleanser from. Would you mind sharing your distributor details or your manufacturer details? And she said, I'm sorry, but this is my business. I'm not going to share my information with you where I get my lash cleanser from. And that kind of sparked this real, you know, I was already frustrated, but it really sparked this, you know, I need to change something about this industry that's so secretive. And I went out and the next day I opened up a Facebook group on Lash Extensions, of course, and I called it Lash Tribe. And today, obviously, Lash Tribe is still there. At the time of this recording, we have around 30,000 members worldwide of Lash artists that are already very advanced. We have trainers in there, some suppliers. We have um, people that want to learn how to do lashes. So it's a big support group. And if you are not part of it yet, definitely jump on because it's absolutely free and there's lots of great topics on every day and people really helping each other out. 
it's uh, Facebook forward slash groups forward slash Lash Tribe and then you'll find the group or you just type in the search bar Lash Tribe and we will be one of the first to come up. But that aside, so I opened up this group and I started going live. I did lots of live videos. I showed people my salon, my little home studio that I had. I explained what I did of setting up a lash tie, for example. I remember that was like one of my first videos that I shared, just to show people how I organize my lashes, how I set up the lash tile. Um, and then later on, of course, I shared also how I lashed. I shared how to do volume fans because I had been doing volume lashes. Um, I was like one of the first in Australia, the kind of first generation of lash artists who did volume, which is now uh, five and a half, six years ago. And people really started to catch on, right? And they really wanted to know more and asked me after three or four months of me having the group if I would train. And because the group was worldwide, I had people from overseas ask if I could train them or if I had some kind of training program because I gave so much value freely without expecting anything in return. Of course, at that time, the group grew so quickly. I did a marketing course on it and how to really utilize a group and grow my own business that way because time I invested, I didn't have time to really work in my, my little home salon, so I was losing money. So I needed to kind of find out how I can turn that into profits, my passion into profits. I'm sure you have heard that before. So the value-based marketing that I used prompted people to ask me if I could train them. And I did not know really how to go about it. So back then in 2016, beginnings of 2016, I had to do a lot of research. I went onto Google for weeks. I was typing in how to become a lash trainer. Nothing came up. Like I had no idea. The only thing that came up how to become a trainer, and that is really specifically for Australia only, is the training and assessment certificate for. Um, which is a Australian government certificate for training others. However, that training wasn't specifically designed for lash artists. Anyone who is a trainer or teacher of some kind or wants to train others in something, whatever it might be, it might be welding, it might be training others in dentistry, it could be anything like that. Um, the training and assessment certificate was the only thing that I could find though and so I sat down for two weeks full time I think these days it's actually a lot longer because they updated everything and I did my training and assessment certificate it cost me a few thousand dollars it was all in person for two weeks straight I couldn't really work during that time of course because I had to be in the city at eight o'clock and it went until like five or six p.m. and then I had to work another three months on my assessments so there was a lot to do and then when I was finished I had this piece of paper, but I still didn't know how to train people in lashes. The good thing that I learned about it though was that I knew how to kind of structure writing a curriculum. Of course, I didn't know what to put into the curriculum just then because it was eyelash extensions and I was only told how to structure a curriculum in any kind of industry. So that was really helpful for me and also I learned a little bit more about different types of learning and how people interact with a, a teacher. I had to stand in front of a classroom of, I think we had about 20 other people that did the training and assessment certificate. None of them in beauty, mind you. There was like teachers, there was personal trainers, there was people in IT, there was all types of people, um, female and male. And so I took my practice heads because I had purchased some practice heads to show people online on how to apply lashes. And then I was sitting in front of all these people in the room and I trained them on how to apply eyelash extensions. It was quite hilarious actually. But um, yeah, I passed my certificate and I was a little bit more confident in dealing with others in a room of people and standing in front of them. But I still didn't know really how to train in lashes. So what I had to do for myself is sit down and this took me about eight months to write my curriculum. And I did not start with classic eyelash extensions. I actually developed an online curriculum first for sale worldwide with volume eyelash extensions. And as I was starting that, I figured out I needed to do something in person as well. So at the same time as developing training videos and everything and a proper manual, which you can see here, I um, wanted to create a 
in-person curriculum. And that was very different because we have over 25 hours worth of content in our online courses. And in all of the courses altogether, we have probably close to 350 different training videos. But to put all of that now into a in-person training was very different because I wasn't able to have students come in for two weeks and teach them because that's essentially how much content there was. So back then I decided to do a two-day volume course and so for me, it was really important to give them the knowledge that was required to create beautiful fans, go home, do a model, of course, as well, but then go home and feel confident enough to keep doing the lashes and not really struggling with any extra knowledge. I wanted to give them everything they required, including the products and including a beautiful menu, which back then not, none of the training companies really had. Um, I was one of the first to have a really beautiful, thick training manual for volume eyelash extensions. And of course, these days, a lot of places do. But I'm just telling you about how everything evolved in the training space. So I never planned on training people straight away. It was a very natural progression by people asking me in the forum because of all the um, online value that I gave them. They thought that I would be good at training them in person as well as online. And then I decided that I needed to have a coach to show me exactly how to grow that group. But no one could help me with my curriculum. This is something I had to do myself, right? So one tip I want to give everyone, if you have only been doing lashes maybe for a year and you feel there's so much more knowledge that you should really have before training, then your gut feeling is right. You should probably collect some more knowledge and have more experience before you actually start training others. Again, like I said in the beginning, it's not about how great you are at lashes, it is about all the knowledge behind it and how you can bring that across to a room of two or three people or more if you are obviously um, allowed to do that. I personally don't train more than six people at once and then I have another trainer helping at the same time as well. But our classes are very small, they're like two to three people at max if it's only me, because I think everyone needs to have that kind of one-on-one -on -one time. But if you feel like you're still lacking in a lot of different areas, do some more advanced training classes. We offer them as well, of course. I never stopped learning. I felt I knew enough, or I knew more than others that wanted to train with me, of course, but I never said that I knew everything. So what I did is I continuously went to training courses. I did so so many training courses you can see here my wall of wisdom i like to call it with all the certificates and i started out very very small my very first in-person training i had here in our home converted garage converted into a salon with two students and then i had another two then i had three then i had three and then after a year and a half i felt like i was outgrowing my home studio and so I started looking for other places. I then went ahead and rented a place somewhere else and soon discovered that it took a lot of, you not know, only have to pay rent, of course, to rent out a room. But for me, it was also about all the setup and taking everything down and all the travel. So I thought, okay, this is not really what I want to do. But a lot of people do that, of course. That's totally fine as well. Um, I wanted to find a bigger space. And then it took another year and a half for me to find, or maybe about a year, to find a space that I really liked. So everything that I did in training others was a very, very natural progression. I never pushed it. I never went totally overboard. I took my time writing my curriculum and really sitting down every single day, trying to figure out what is it that I need to show someone that I may not even remember really when I went back to classic lashes because it was at that stage six years past that I had learned how to even pick up a lash. So when you are a trainer, you really have to kind of trans morph into this person that has no idea how to hold a tweezer even. And because we all know if you're listening to this and you are a little bit more advanced or you, you have been applying lashes for a few years, this is something you probably have to really think back and go really deep because now you do lashes every single day. You probably don't even think back to those days where you didn't know how to hold a tweezer. It is a natural thing for you. So to go really deep 
and very, very detailed. How do I even hold a tweezer? How do I pick up a lash from a tray? How do I even take that strip out of the tray and put it onto my um, lash tile? All these little things. How do I position my body? How do I have to hold my hand next to the lash tile? How does an eyelash adhesive even work? What is the chemistry behind it? All of these kinds of things you need to be able to teach your students and then also bring it across in the way that they understand, they remember, and they're not fearful of, and they're actually looking forward to it. So there's a lot of art to teaching lashes, not just because the lashes are the art itself, but teaching itself is an art. And I don't understand how some people can have done lashes for maybe a month or two, and they jump into training others only because they wanna make more money. There's training organizations that call themselves that, that haven't even trained a single person themselves. They may have had a lash salon or maybe have had a few clients in, but for them to train now others to move on to becoming eyelash technicians, I think it's very, very dangerous for our industry to have those people train others because number one, they don't really care if the people that are wanting to go through the training have experience. Number two, it's just money for them. And number three, there's no ongoing support, right? So for me, to tell anyone on that's watching or listening right now, yeah, you can be a lash trainer. If I could say that, that would be a lie. It is a lie if I say anyone can train anyone right now if you have done lashes for a couple of weeks. It just isn't as easy as that. For me, it took me many years to perfect the art of training others, okay? And this is why now I train other lash trainers to become better lash trainers. The thing is, the difference is we don't just take on any lash person that wants to be a trainer. You need to have at least a year or two experience in classic lashes. You need to be confident and comfortable talking to people. You know, you need to meet, show me your social media and I wanna see your work. So we actually turn away about 80% of the applications that we get every day, we turn them away because we know you are not ready to train others. I am very big advocate for this industry. I wanna maintain this industry as a high earning high end industry i don't want us to end up like the nail industry because it starts with the trainers if the trainer doesn't know lashes very well themselves and all the knowledge that is behind it all the science the product knowledge the cosmetic chemistry behind everything or how a student might learn better or how what kind of support they need if you don't know any of this yet, you are not going to be able to train others to know all of this because you need to be able to show someone not only how to apply lashes, but also how to step forward and move forward and actually open up a thriving business. Like a business part of it is also very important. So if you are very, very strongly considering to become a lash trainer, please make sure that you pass our prerequisite test. Just to give you an idea of how far you are in this industry and if you are ready. If you are not able to answer those basic knowledge questions, I would go back to the drawing board and maybe do a few more trainings yourself. You can find the test on lashtribe.com.au. Now I wanna give those that are training already or have started our training a few more tips. My tip number one is never stop learning. Only because you are training others now doesn't mean that your journey ends here because things are evolving very quickly. I mean, just in the last couple of years, if you look at how pre-made volume fans have evolved, it's just amazing. And now, because we have these pre-made volume fans floating around everywhere, it would be a disservice not to tell your students about it. It is something that you really need to look at and take into consideration because they will ask about it. Students ask, they're inquisitive, they do research, they are on forums and they research your training academy and they also research other things that are out there and products. And if you have a training academy that maybe offers only classic lash training, but the other lash academy offers classics, volume, mega volume, advanced lashing and styling, anything like that that has to do with lots of other areas in this industry, not just applying one lash per natural lash, then they may like to go with an academy that offers a little bit more because they know that they feel like this person 
just has researched a bit more, they continuously learn, they cover so much more ground than just a basic classic lash course, yeah? Tip number two, of course, is to put your knowledge into a written form. You can also, of course, record video content, which is really helpful. We always teach our trainer students to do a little bit of both, especially if you don't wanna have someone coming in for classic lashes for two weeks straight and teach them all about the anatomy of the eye or how the hair follicle is sitting and where the capillaries are. Um, you might not wanna go through all the health place and safety stuff. You can send them videos to watch prior to your training get them to pass a little prerequisite test and then they can come in for your training for the actual work and the one-on-one. -on -one. This is also an option, of course. And also be prepared that writing in manual may not work out in a week. It has taken myself to rewrite our classic manual a good four to five months. Yeah, so take your time and really go through everything with a fine tooth comb and get someone else to read your manual that has never done lashes before because that will give you a good indication whether it is detailed enough and easy enough to read. Which brings me to number three, keep things simple, use easy language. I always say to our students, write your manual as if a seven-year-old is reading it. When you are writing your manual, especially if it's a classic manual, you need to put yourself back into the position that you were in yourself when you just started out lashing, you know nothing. Keep it simple and be very detailed though in every single step. And remember that the way that you're holding the tweezer has a lot to do, especially when volume learning, of course, with how you set yourself up for success. Isolation is another thing. I mean, if you're writing a manual, it's very important to put pictures in it as well, not just having a description of you should hold your hand like that and then isolate it doesn't say anything if you are training a student in your academy and you're teaching them on day one how to isolate the lashes and then on day three they kind of should have a gist of it and then they go home and maybe they forget because they're nervous the first time they might flip their tweezer it happens a lot of students um a lot of students of mine when they are learning the first day they're great and the second day they come and go they think they're great and they flip their tweezers around to isolate, which of course doesn't work if it's a, an angle isolation tweezer at like a 45 degree angle or something like that. With a straight tweezer, it's a little bit different. And just keep in mind, when your students go home, they need to have the support there. They need to feel confident and comfortable to continue the work at home. Because if you are not giving them a manual and not giving them online support or any kind of support, then they are left to their own devices number one they will probably re not remember very much of the training because when people are training in class they are nervous they make mistakes and when they go home they forget a lot of that kind of stuff as well so just be very very aware that you have to give them the support that you wanted when you were learning lashes yourself and maybe you didn't get or maybe you did get the support and this is why you know exactly what you should be getting your students and another point, of course, is to remember that not every student learns the same way. You may have some students sitting there looking at you with an empty kind of look and you think, well, are they understanding it? Are they enjoying it? Or what is going on? And you might feel like you're a little bit taken back by that. And then you might have students that are really loud and they kind of always try and talk over you or they disrupt the classroom. So you need to know and learn how to deal with these kinds of students. And then you might have this type of student that runs out crying or throws their tweezers on the floor. We've had that happen before. So just be aware that there's different learning types, different types of students and how to deal with them. And I can record that in another episode of the Lash Tribe show um, on you know going a little bit more into detail about those different learning types as well. Something a trainer also needs to realize is that they are giving away all of their knowledge freely. Obviously, they will be paid, but you have to be able to say, yep, yeah, that's fine. I am an open book. I'm going to lay out everything in front of you that I have learned over the last however many years you've been doing lashes. In my case, it's now 10 and a half years. And it could be that this person will take that at some stage and make their own little training out of it. 
you need to make sure you know, yes, this can happen. But because now you are my student, I want to give you all of me. I want to be there every step of the way. I want to give you the support. You want to be the trainer for them. You want to give them the most support that they deserve. And of course, lastly, everything needs to be coming together beautifully. It needs to be presented online. You need to be able to have, if you are not online, some kind of way to show people that you are now training others. Yeah, if you don't have a huge online following and you haven't built your own tribe, I would highly recommend you do that. And the best ways to do that is to actually offer your expertise in other forums. Yeah, you can go to other salons even and say if they don't offer lashes that you are now training others. You might do like salon specials for going into the salons and training others. But I think the, the best way to gauge kind of interest is in online forums and this is exactly how I started out. Make sure the information that you're giving out is true and 100% safe and this is what training is all about. You don't want to train people how to put 10 0 0.10 lashes on someone because they want to look like Kim Kardashian and is about to take off with their lashes. You want to make sure that you are one of the trainers that teaches the art of eyelash extensions in a safe way, in a sustainable way, without making our industry go down and having a bad name for itself. It's very, very important for me. And this is why, this is like one of my whys. It's not just supporting my family, but really it is about keeping this industry alive because I know it's on a downward spiral, especially if we're getting these really bad trainer courses out there that cost you a couple hundred dollars and you can watch three online tutorials. It's just very, very scary to see right now where it's going. Another thing that's scary is how many trainers are training others without the proper insurance. And you can't get insurance as a trainer if you only have a diploma in beauty or you have just a certificate in eyelash extensions because the insurance is very different for being a trainer and the only things today in Australia anyway as far as I'm aware of are the NALA course that we're holding the three-day trainer course as well as your TAE in training and assessment I would highly recommend you get both um, but just to be you know very very clear about it everything takes work and takes time and is also a little bit of an investment but lash trap also likes to teach the correct way the safe way and the legal way so i just need you to be really aware of uh, the things that are required to be training legally in australia which means you need a trainer insurance and you might be kind of on the fence should you be a trainer do you think you will be good enough to be a trainer you are more than welcome to contact us at info at lashtribe.com.au or go to lashtribe.com.au to check out our training and prerequisite test to see if you're ready. Maybe just send a few of your photos through. Let me have a look at your social media and let me kind of see of where you are at in your lashing career and if I think that you might be ready. We have created very, very successful lash trainers that are now judging themselves, that are now traveling all over the world, especially pre-COVID, of course, um, and hopefully again post-COVID as well. So we can give you the best knowledge in the industry, up-to-date information, all of the stuff that you need to know about products, all the cosmetic chemistry behind it, how to deal with different students, how to write the perfect curriculum and how to structure everything. We will actually tell you exactly what needs to be in your curriculum. And if you follow the steps, you will have at least 300% more than any other Lash Academies out there within your curriculum, yeah. Our trainer training by Nala is what you call the Michelin style of lashes. So if you would like to have more information, go ahead and check us out. We get a lot of emails and inquiries about our trainer training course. Unfortunately, there will be no more training dates for 2020, but we have just announced our 2021 training dates and our first training will be on the 31st of January until the 2nd of February and all the other training dates you can find as well on lashtribe.com.au. Um, just make sure that you book in in advance because we only take a certain amount of people through and we only hold this three times a year. With that being said, 
I hope that you are one of the people that will keep the lash industry alive and to help create even more successful lash artists um, that charge their worth as well. Training is such an honor. And if you are one of our students that have listened to this, thank you for trusting in us and thank you for doing such an amazing job. I will see you and hear you all in the next episode of The Lash Tribe Show. Bye.